Welcome everyone, welcome. Come on in. This is Pastor Galen Wright of the Third Avenue Missionary uh, Baptist Church. Thank you for joining in with us today. Uh, we're going to pick up uh, on our second portion of our financial literacy, our financial teaching uh, portion of our studies for the year of 2022. Um, we're going to move a little further on from what we were uh, dealt with on last week. We dealt with our fi uh, financial management and, you know, just finan organ our financial organization. And we talked a little bit about our earning, organizing, and saving. We're going to go a little more in depth with some, uh, I guess you would say some uh, work. We're going. I'm going to ask that if you would, would you get you a, a, a scratch pad or some type of uh, something that you can take notes with or uh, to, to uh, that you can go back over and look at what I'm going to share with you today. Um, if not, you can just look at the, uh, the rebroadcast of this segment of our financial literacy segment. And then I want, uh, want you, I want you to kind of set, we're going to look at setting some goals and some plans and having a structure as to how we're going to get to the point to where we are better stewards of the finances that we already have and then how to uh, take advantage of it. Uh, as I said last week, this is not a, a study or a teaching to teach you how to get rich. This is how to manage and maintain and, and live a wealthy life with what you have and to make better decisions and to be able to enjoy it. Um, we have found now that it's not about how much money you make that determines your financial happiness, but it is actually how you utilize the finances that you have that can bring you happiness or it can also bring you destruction. So our aim and our goal is to try to give you some structure as to how to use it. Um, I ask many people and I ask you the same who are listening with us today, take a look at money and how is it best used? What, um, how do you get satisfaction from finances? Uh, money in particular, how do you, how, do, how is it, um, what is it about money uh, that makes it uh, have any worth or any value to it? And I think we all can come to the conclusion that in order to appreciate money, you have to spend money. Money uh, doesn't do much for you to just have it and not be able to spend it or not be able to use it. Money is something that has to be in operation. It has to have some, some type of operation for you to have any benefit from it. So, but uh, I want us to learn how to have optimal benefit from our finances and have a, a, a sense of satisfaction with it. I, I do not preach rich or poor or anything like that or teach rich or poor. Um, I teach, uh, I try to teach balance, teach balance, how to utilize resources. So uh, we're going to look at that today. So if you, if you don't have it already, get, get your scratch pad, pencil, paper, or whatever devices you have that you want to take notes with today so that we can kind of cover some ground to set up a, uh, some structure and, and, and try to set up some ways to where you can have optimal um, use of your finances and it will be a great benefit to you. But first we'll have a word of prayer and then we'll get off into our lesson for today. Gracious and loving Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that this study and this teaching today will uh, enhance the lives and household of many of, uh, of those that will listen and understand the teachings on today. Father, I pray now that they will accept it in their hearts and, and not just in their heads and that they will understand the benefits of the blessings of finances that you have gifted so many of us with. Father, I pray now that those that are struggling and having these, uh, going through these difficult times and do, don't have an idea or a clue as to how to manage because they have been mismanaging maybe generationally so uh, I pray now that this will break that cycle, that, that they will now come to understand how to handle finances and that they will continue to grow and to continue to, continue to enjoy the benefits of life that you have gifted so many of us with. And Father, I pray now for those that are 
uh, that are sick, those that are facing uh, unemployment even. Father, I pray that you would just bless them and guide them and teach them in the ways that they should go so that they can benefit in, benefit from the understanding and the wisdom and knowledge that you have gifted us with. This prayer I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Again, we're going to look at finances today, and I hope that you're ready and you're logged in and ready uh, to go. And I pray that this will be a great blessing to you because we see a struggle now uh, because of our current uh, condition now with unemployment, uh, low pay, uh, a short, uh, 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 those that are unwilling to work, some that are unable to work. We see that uh, finance is really becoming an issue. It's becoming a big issue. Uh, but I, I want us to know that just because the world is in a in disarray, it does not mean that your finances have to be in disarray. Maybe, maybe you just need to learn how to make some adjustments in life, and the adjustments that you make in life may not be beneficial to, or you may not see them as being beneficial to you immediately. Sometimes it takes some patience, and sometimes it takes some time, and it also takes some dedication to get to the place where you would like to be or you desire to be. Uh, maybe it's not an instant situation for you, but if you would just have faith and if you would just uh, kind of structure yourself and do your due diligence, then you can get to the point to where you want to be. You can live the life that you would like to live. I believe that God will bless you with every spiritual gift and every physical gift that your heart can desire. Once and you get yourself uh, prepared for it, you can utilize the gifts that he has given us. So last week we looked at, uh, in, in this financial class, we looked at um, earning, organizing, and saving. And we, we learned from the scriptures of, in the, of the Proverbs how that we should earn and how she, we, should, we should earn and we should be consistent in our earning. Uh, we, we should work diligently and then we should work honorably. Work honorably in the jobs and the professions that we have and then we, we earn on a consistent basis. Don't be so quick to give up. Don't be so quick to give in. And then we need to learn to organize. And when we organize, we talked about uh, learning how to make investments with our earning. And that investment is not always a stock market situation, but that investment is learning how to teach yourself that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. You need to learn how to give uh, to the necessary functions in order that you may reap rewards of a great return. Then we talked about saving. We, uh, saving means to, our savings we look at is to put away or to store up. And we need to have a purpose for that, not just to save so that we can have so much in our bones that we can't use, but save because we have particular functions that we would like to uh, take care of maybe later down the line. So we looked at the earning, organizing, and saving. We also learned that we ought not to try to store up so much money and, and, and finances and, and end up with the wrong mindset. And, we have, and it will sometimes cause us to become greedy or covetous. And uh, it's, it's, it's money, again, is used to spend, it's, it's to use. So I'm not a big proponent of having money and don't have a plan for it or don't have a use for it other than just saying, I got it. If you want to enjoy it, spend it, use it. Now, when I say spend it or use it, I do not mean, I do not mean throw it away. I don't mean uh, it's inappropriate to have money saved up and stored up, but I am saying enjoy it use it use it wisely use it um, use it in a way that it benefits you can reap the benefits of having it so um, but don't be greedy and don't be covetous about it 
don't be so greedy to where you just have to have it all and you just can't get enough and you you spend your life trying to get, 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 and get more. Learn how to appreciate what you do have. Use it the way, in an, uh, use it in a responsible way and then appreciate that and enjoy that. But don't waste your life trying to get more because truthfully, you will never be satisfied because if you get greedy, you can never have enough and you'll always be trying to have more and you'll miss out on appreciating or enjoying that which you do have. And don't be covetous. Don't, don't go out to try to have so much uh, and have much more than your neighbor and everybody else and, and trying to prove that you got it all and you have everything. Learn how to invest. Learn how to share. Learn how to... Um, Learn how to bless others with the gifts that you have. So don't be greedy, greedy or covetous with it. And we looked at that uh, again over in the Proverbs. That one was actually, uh, we looked over it in Proverbs chapter 15 for a lot of these, a lot of these things. But this week we're going to learn, we're going to, I'm going to get you on some pen and paper activity. I want you to get, uh, get your, Get your uh, recording devices or your pen and paper or however you want to do it. And I want to, I want you to <clears throat> follow me with this. And again, if you don't get it now, you can write it down. <laughs> write it down. Today, we're going to get a little uh, personal. I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm going to uh, give you some directions on your own personal income, your own personal income. Glad it's social media, so I don't have to ask this question, and I don't. I'm not asking these questions or asking you to do these things so you can put your personal information out there. But I want to kind of be a little closer to home with you today. First thing, uh, when you have your pencil and paper, I want you to kind of make your graph or chart or list. One list, I want you to tag it as income. It's going to be one list. The other list will be expenses. And then the other one will be savings or miscellaneous. These are three categories that we're going to make lists on each one of these. Now, this is what I want you to do. Uh, uh, I want your mindset to be before you even get off into, uh, uh, before we even go any further. I want you to be in the mindset, don't fool yourself. Don't cheat yourself by not giving all of your information. You're doing this at home and you're doing it personally. This is a personal deal, so you don't have to give out your public inf personal information out in public. But I really want you to put it in your mind. Don't cheat yourself because the, the big struggle here with finances is sometimes we cheat ourselves because when we look at our income and we look at our expenses, a lot of times we won't list them all. And if you won't list them all, you won't receive accurate information. So don't cheat yourself by leaving anything out. On the first list, we're looking at income. I want you on that list to write down your monthly income. Write it, or <clears throat> whatever your monthly income is. And when I say income, this is your after taxed income. After your taxes are taken out, after your child support is taken out, after whatever it is you have, whatever uh, uh, payment you have that is taken out, after that is taken, what are you bringing home? I want you to bring home income, whether it be from uh, your primary job, whether it be a primary job plus a part-time job, um, if it's child support, if it's disability, uh, whatever it is, I want you to list it. I want you to list what that income is. I want you to put it under monthly income, not weekly, not bi-weekly, but what it is that you bring home monthly. List, the, list all of that. And, and try to get as accurate as you possibly can. Think of all the income that you get for the month and what that take-home number is. 
Then, <clears throat> after that, we're going to go to the expenses. And I'm going kind of going through it fast now, but I'm just going to kind of touch over these areas. And, uh, and the, But you can do it with yourself a little later on. Now, next column will be your monthly expenses. Whatever your monthly expenses are, I want you to list them in that category. Whether it, at first, for the believer, and I told you that this is a Bible-believing uh, concept. This is what we do as believers. This is what I personally do. The first expense that I have, and I don't look at it as an expense, but I do look at it as the first fruit and the payment or that I give, that I offer to God, your tithes. You list your tithes as one of your expenses. I'm going to pay that on top first. That's why I list it first for me personally because this is how I believe and this is how I've lived and this is what I agree with. Then we're going to list other expenses. Do not cheat yourself because you don't want inaccurate information, whether it be rent, mortgage, whatever it is. Uh, this is the monthly expense, not your weekly, not your bi-weekly, monthly. What do you pay for rent, mortgage, uh, automobile expense, uh, your uh, monthly payment on your automobile? Then I want you to list your insurances, car insurance, home insurance, um, whatever, it, whatever it is that you pay. Whatever it is that you pay, uh, you pay. Uh, then I want you to list your food. Food being your grocery, groceries, or whatever it is you spend with eating out. All I want those together. Uh, uh, list those together. What do you spend going out to eat every week or every month? Tally it up for the month. What are you What are you spending there? Uh, your gas, your fuel. Uh, then list all of your other uh, uh, bills that you have, whether it be cable, whether it be internet, um, uh, what is that, Wi-Fi, your credit, if you have credit card expense, if you have school loan payment, or some type of garnishment coming out, uh, uh, that, I mean payment that you have to pay, not a garnishment, but payments that you have to pay, I want you to list all of these in your expenses. Then you're going to total that up total up your uh, all of your expenses then you total up your monthly income then you have on the side for uh, savings and miscellaneous I, you can total that up or you can put that to the side but we're not going to use that right now what now I'm, I'm trying to I'm, what I'm going to do now is kind of teach you how to organize some things <clears throat> when you look at the both totals you, you it'll give you a number it'll give you a number and you'll see what you pay and uh, hopefully anyway what you have left over what you have left over after you total your income hopefully your income is more than your expenses and then after you total these two numbers up you subtract your expenses from your income and hopefully there is a balance afterwards. Now, if there is a balance afterwards, first you need to find out where that balance is going. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with that balance? Um, that, that, that balance, that is, a, I, I guess, miscellaneous. That's some, some we're just money that we've just spent around maybe giving, helping somebody or doing something else. With, with, but we really want to know what that amount is. Because what we're going to try to do is increase that amount. Here is the concept. The concept is to teach you how to handle your finances and use them wisely. Now, if you're struggling and you, you have more income than you do expenses, but yet still at the end of the month you don't have anything and you find yourself borrowing or needing financial aid from some trying to get financial aid from somewhere else then we have to take a look at what is the cause of it and how can we fix the situation here's how we fix the situation when you look at your expenses when you look at your expenses and 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 this is really uh, uh this is a 
concept of being a steward, like we are uh, taught to be for the church and for God's house. We have to learn how to be stewards. We always say that the church is supposed to just give, 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 but sometimes the stewards have to determine enough is enough or we're not doing en enough giving or we're doing too much giving or we may be giving too much in the wrong areas. So we have to be stewards over God's money. We don't lord over it to where we don't use it, but we try to make sure that it is appropriated in the right areas. So what you do now is you take your expenses and take a look at your expenses. Now, pay, pay close attention with me. You want to determine which one of these, which of these expenses accrue interest, which of which, which ones of these could be temporary, but because you may be, uh, you may have not taken care of them properly, they have become long term. Then we can look at which one of these expenses are necessary, and which one of them are uh, really a pleasure or, or you know, uh, kind of something that we just kind of treat ourselves with. Given, given a, an example, a credit card expense. A credit card expense could be temporary, but if, misappro if you uh, misappropriate your finances, it can be long-term and extremely costly. So that is one that continuously grows. It doesn't just keep coming. It actually grows. The more you kind of miss a payment or late on a payment, the expense grows and it goes longer because you, now you have penalties and interest added to the credit card expense. So now what was once temporary, now it has become long-term and it has a lasting effect on your finances. That's what happens with uh, the, in the instance of credit card. Uh, now we look at late payments on bills, the cable bill, the internet bill, the mortgage, the rent. What happens when you're late on them or you get behind on them? It grows. So now we have to restructure some things in our finances to learn how uh, to best fix this situation. So now we look at, uh, take a look at all of your expenses, determine which ones you can temporarily do without. And just for the ones that I did mention, I'm giving examples and you have to do this with your own finances. This is what we do. And again, this is good stewardship. This is how you handle finances. Now you have to make an adjustment. There may be some on here on this list that you could temporarily do without or maybe even permanently do without. I still am a proponent of you can have anything you want in life, but it's how you how you come about having these things. Here's what we do. We take the, we look over the list and if there's something on here that we could temporarily do away with, then we do that. Now, for an example, on this list that I gave you that we spoke about, one thing that we might be able to do away with temporarily would, might be your cable bill. Might be your cable bill. You do away with the cable bill. Take that amount that you do away with on that cable bill. And this is what you do. You take that amount, you take that amount that you, month, that you pay monthly with and you put it on another bill that that should have been temporary but has become long term put it add that with your payment to your credit card bill now this is what we're doing i know this is very elementary but the key to it is is dedication and persistence you've got to learn to be dedicated to this process now what you do is you take that cable bill do without cable, make the, make the commitment to do without the cable bill for a minute. Take that payment, add it, add it, not replace, but add it to your credit card payment and eradicate your credit card bill. And in the process, teach yourself how to stop abusing the credit card. Stop abusing the credit card 
and make the added payments to kill the interest, kill the late fees and penalties, and pay off the credit card. Now, once you pay off the credit card, look what you have done, what you have accomplished. You have paid off the credit card, which you no longer have that bill. Then you have done away with your cable bill for the time being, and you do not have that bill anymore. Now, every, those two are paid and caught up. Now, you possibly, at that time, it's your choosing, your desire. You possibly could go back now and get your, if you don't have the credit card bill, now you can, you can have one. You can have the cable bill back now. Or you can say, well, I can handle my credit card and I don't abuse it anymore. You might be able to handle a credit card payment. That's, that's up to you. That's your decision. But look what has happened. You've actually trained yourself and taught yourself how to save money. You never, sometimes we don't think about that. If I've learned how to take one bill, do without it, say that bill is a hundred bucks a month. I've learned how to take a hundred bucks and put it in savings because even though you didn't put it in the savings, you still learn how to not have to deal with a hundred hundred bucks a month because it's going somewhere else. This is what we have to learn to do. This is your mind process. I've gotten rid of the $100 a month bill. Now I've paid it so long on the credit card bill to where I've gotten rid of the credit card bill. Say the credit card bill was $200 a month. I mean 100 bucks a month. Now with both bills being done away with, that's 200 bucks a month. Now, you're used to not having the $200 a month because you're always paying it on your monthly note. It would be wise for you now to learn how to take the $200 and if you could pay it on a bill, you could pay yourself, put it in the savings account. You're not used to having it anyway, so you really don't miss it. Put it in the savings account, pay yourself $200 a month. If you can pay a bill for two years at $200 a month, you ought to be disciplined enough to pay yourself $200 a month in a savings account. That Those years go by real quick, so don't look at it as a long time. Uh, 200 bucks a month, you're looking at 12 months out of the year. You're looking at uh, 2,400 bucks a year. The, uh, I'm just using that number, but it go by so fast. But you've learned how to pay yourself, just like you pay your bill. Now, I told you this is not for you to get rich, but it is for you to make better decisions. Once you have some money saved up and you're used to paying the 200 bucks a month, now you're used to paying a bill. Now you're used to handling a bill. So now, after you have something, you have some form of a cushion, you can go ahead now and have some of the pleasures of life because you can afford them now. Instead of buying with the credit card, the things that you were purchasing, you may be able now to buy them cash because you have some cash stored up. This is the principle of stewardship. We have to learn how to live without the credit factor. Most income struggles don't come from what you, uh, the cars and the home and the things that you're paying for. Most of your struggles come from the interest and the penalties and late payment. payment. You've kind of stretched yourself thin and it is the interest and it is the penalties of usually what uh, is the source of your struggles, the late payments, because you've spread yourself thin. So a lot of things that you have, and I really believe it because the church does it when the church is doing it the way God has intended for them to do it? The, a lot of times, the, the church is able to purchase a lot of things and they're able to pay for it without getting loans because we've learned the principle of having is to store up into the storehouse so that that uh, we can handle the needs in God's house. So, therefore, when we do the purchases, the church that operates the way God intends for it to operate, a lot of times we, we're able to collectively come together and purchase what we have without dealing with late fees and interest and penalties. You do the same thing for your own home. Bar, uh, 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 a loan and credit cards and interest, that's for those that don't have and, and a lot of times the struggle is, it's not that you don't have the, uh, the money, 
you don't have the you don't have the means to get the money. That's where the struggle comes in. Sometimes I hear people say sometimes that uh, if they let me have it, I'm gonna get it. I don't care. I'll get the money some kind of way. That's a dead end road. That's a dead end road. But I, I deserve it, and I don't care. And you, you gotta die uh, uh, with bills anyway. And if they let me have it, well, well, the problem is you don't know when you're gonna die, and you're gonna live around here as if you're dead because you'll never be able to do anything. You have to have discipline, and you can still have these things that you desire if you would just kind of structure how you obtain them. Work honestly, work consistently, and then learn how to manage what you have and until you're able to achieve these things. So you look at your expenses. You look at your expenses. What can I temporarily do without? What can I, what can I kind of rearrange? And then teach yourself. Don't go out and purchase anything that you, that you can't afford, but then also know how to determine if you can afford it or not. You cannot let a mortgage company or any other company, and I'm using them as an example, determine how much you can afford to pay for a home. When we purchased our first home, there was they wanted to know how much income we had. They wanted to know uh, how much, uh, um, how many bills and what our monthly bills were. And then they decided how much house we could afford. Well, here's the trick. The trick was, they always offered us a house that if you look at our income and our expenses and the monthly note, they always offered us a house that would not leave us any extra money. If, we, if they look at our expenses and they looked at what the house note was going to be, it would leave us with two or three hundred bucks a month. And they said, well, you can afford it based on your income. Well, no, if all I'm going to have left over is two or three hundred bucks, I cannot afford that house because I know that there are some other things that's going to come up that you didn't factor in. And I know you didn't even factor in what I am to save. And I, I again, I don't believe in working and not paying myself first. I pay my tithes and I'm going to pay myself. If I don't have anything left over for myself, Everything else is going to have to wait because I believe in putting something up so we can afford, learn, so we can afford some other things down the line. So, so you have to learn how to do the same for yourself. You don't let anybody else tell you what you can afford. You have the numbers yourself. You know what you make. You know what your bills are. You have to determine how much do I want to have left over at the end of every month? How much income do I have left over at the end of the month? That determines what type of bills you need to make. And then it should always be enough. It should always be enough to where if something happens, if you have to be off work for two weeks or a month or something like that, you should always, uh, your bill should always be to the point to where I can pay it a month or two or at least before problems hit, or I might have to start losing something. Um, my parents, my mother's rule of thumb was for me, uh, and when having bills, uh, being married, and I'll, I'll put it that way for those of dual income homes, being married, my mother always said that your bills should, uh, uh, should not get over the uh, amount that the one that uh, earns the lease makes. So whoever makes the lease in the house, your bills should be uh, your sh bills should be to the point to where that person can pay it. So if you make double of what your wife makes or your spouse makes, then the least is where my bills are so, where my bills should be. So if I lose my job, we can still pay our bills. And you do that consistently until you can afford to purchase and do better. And if you're faithful in your working and you're faithful in your stewardship, you don't have to live like that always, just until you get to the position 
to where now I can ease things up. Well, let me keep on with the saving. Once you learn how to deal with those temporary bills, once you learn how to deal with some bills that you can kind of cut out and you learn how to put some money up, let's look at some of the other bills that you have that sometimes we don't think we can do away with because we have uh, been taught that you cannot uh, you cannot do that. It won't work for you. Another thing, is, let's take a look at your, uh, um, your vehicles. Let's look at your vehicles. Vehicles, the interest on vehicles build differently from the, that of on a mortgage uh, you pretty much pay you pretty much pay um, the interest on a vehicle regardless uh, I hear some people say that how I paid my vehicle off early well the way the way the interest accrues on a vehicle is not the same as the way it accrues on a, on a mortgage on a home uh, you pay you pay it regardless and so when you pay it off early you really didn't save money, you just saved time. And which, that's a benefit sometimes, that is, that is a benefit sometimes. But if you learn how to save your money and put up money, you can kill the interest one other way, by purchasing a car cash, purchasing it. And some people say, well man, these cars are so expensive these days. If you learn how to manage your money and save your money, uh, it's, it's not all that difficult. It's not, it, it, it really isn't all that difficult. You have to believe it. You have to understand it, and you have to be dedicated to the process. It's not that dis uh, uh, difficult. It just requires discipline to do these things, and it can be done. And I know many people that have done it, and many people that do do these things. And but when you're able to do that, and you're still consistently working, think about it. Now you don't have a car payment. Now you don't have um, the cable bill. You don't have the credit card expensive. Remember, you're still working. You're still earning, but you don't have these monthly payments. So every month, this money goes back to you. And when it goes back to you, then you can put up this nest egg and look what you're doing. You're still accomplishing and you're still having the same thing with less pressure on you in life. I believe that this is how God intends for us to live. You do not have to get the pressures of life on you by doing it a way that society says that you have to do it. You have to set goals. Uh, I'm going to kind of veer off right now and, and share something with you. The way you do this, the way this is accomplished is by the gift that God has given every man. He has given every man the ability to utilize his own mind. And whenever you take your mind and you let somebody else structure your thinking and your thought process, it will always limit you from what you could have achieved by the grace of God. Society teaches us to take our mind and think about it. God gave everybody his own individual mind. Your mind can achieve and think just like anybody else's. But we have kind of structured ourselves in a danger, and I say it is a, a sometimes a danger for many of us, is when we try to take our minds and put it in a structured environment and try to get everybody to think like the teacher is trying to get them to think instead of using their own mind. An example being, uh, we have brilliant minds and we send uh, brilliant minds to school to become the same that person. Everybody wants to go to school and get a degree to become a doctor or everybody wants to become a lawyer or everybody wants to come. And the danger is, the danger is you have everybody on this platform and you're trying to get all of them to think the same way and use the same process of learning and then after they graduate you can you only have one job to offer 500 people whatever happened to you using your own mind your own brilliance you don't need another man to give you a book to teach you how to come up with a medication for healing. You need to use your own mind because 
ultimately that company is going to be dependent on you anyway to find out what the medication is going to be or what is needed. It's the same way with the structure of your finances. Same way with the structure of your finances. We cannot allow, we cannot allow, if you want to move, you cannot allow yourself to do it the way society dictates. I hear so many people saying that you can't live without credit. But then when I look at credit, credit is, uh, credit is given to those that are borrowing. The problem with it is the people that are borrowing don't have adequate income to pay back what you're borrowing, let alone pay that back and pay the bills that you have also. So that's not always a good strategy. Borrowing is fine if you have the source to repay, but many don't have the source to repay, and, and it costs many. It, uh, uh, borrowing rarely, if ever, benefits the borrower. It, it uh, profits the lender. He's the one getting the extra. It is used for scraping and struggling trying to come up with it. But you have to open your mind and use your God-given intelligence to structure your life. Discipline yourself. Work. The Bible teaches us man doesn't work. He don't ought not to eat. Work. Work honorably. Work consistently. Don't let your hand go to sleep on the plow. Keep going. Keep on pressing forward and learn how to manage what you have. And the things that you desire, you can obtain them, you can get them. And this is what we're talking about financially. Open your mind, open your mind, discipline yourself, and let God bless you with the ability to make these decisions and to gain what you need. So now, remember, write down your income, whatever your income is. That'll determine if you need to get another job, then you might look and say, well, I make enough money. I just need to kind of restructure my spending. I need to kind of change my spending habits. I need to determine what's important to me. And then this, this, <coughs> and, and I'm, I'm kind of glad and happy to talk about these finances because sometimes we don't look at what finances or the mismanagement of finances can do to us. And I know I'm not giving a whole lot of scripture or giving scripture, but it, it still is a Bible principle or a principle of management of stewardship. Um, mismanagement and poor judgment and poor decision making ultimately could lead to mental uh, struggles, uh, health issues. It, it runs a gamut. It, it, it goes far beyond just not having money in your pocket. Uh, sometimes we can get so financially distressed and get into a position of not having finances or not managing our finances correctly, mentally it can mess you up. It'll break your self-esteem. It will break your drive. It'll put you in a, a, a mental state of hopelessness. Things ain't going to get better. I'll never have anything. And I, I, I'll never be able to, to do what other people are doing. And it'll, it could bring about jealousy. It could bring about, in, in your life, you get jealous of others who are able to go out and do some things that you desire to do. Then it can mess with your health. Once it puts you in a state of depression, depression will, will break the body down. Depression will break the body just like drug addiction. The, matter of fact, depression will lead you into drug addiction. It could lead you into these positions. So therefore, we have to learn how to make better decisions and make good judgment. But not also is the struggle with money uh, uh, not having enough. But sometimes for those with the wrong mindset, having too much is a problem also. Because it can lead to the, some of the same t uh, issues. Depression. It could, it could easily lead into depression. It could easily lead into health issues. I'll show you, i give you an example of that also. For those that have a lot of money, 
They have so much money that they can buy whatever they want, go wherever they want, and do whatever they want to do. And, and you know what happens when you get to that position? Because you didn't learn how to steward your money. You didn't learn how, and, and when I say steward, I'm not talking about just keeping money and saving money, but also administering money and sharing with others and giving to others. That's a part of stewardship. Now, those that have much and have plenty and can buy pretty much anything they want and go where they want and do what they want to do, they use this up from depression because they have in turn taken the income that they have and it has become their God. It has been, they worked so hard to get it or, or, or it's been in my family for so long or, or you, you spend all of your time not, not learning to appreciate it or using it to appreciate. Now you spend all of your time trying to keep it because so many people are trying to get it from you. And so many people are, are asking for donations and gifts and, and, and you, I can't give, I can't give because can't give all my money away. I'm going to get broke or I'm going to lose this and I'm going to lose that. And, 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 and then you get to the form where I, why should I give it to you? You had a chance to get money and you just need to go to work and do all of that. And it could just mess your mind up for the love of money is the root of all evil. You are falling so much in love with money that you spend all of your time trying to keep it. And, and when you do get a chance to keep it, you realize that it's not really satisfying you because, again, money is good when you spend it. You, you get the benefits of it when you're able to spend it or, or utilize it or share it or give it, not just to have it. So the danger of money is the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, um, the poor love to try to get it and the rich love to try to keep it. And it could cause struggles. It could cause you to lose the joy of life. And, and, and when I look at that, it shares with me that there's enough of it out here for everybody. It's just all about how you manage it and how you deal with it. Don't let, don't let finances cause you to miss out on relationships with others, uh, separating yourself uh, because of what an economical status. Don't let money be that. Don't let it be that guy that causes division and causes unrest in the lives of individuals. But for those of us who, who, who have to kind of manage our decision making, in order to achieve and get to the place that we want to be, then you ought to learn how to appreciate it. Uh, I didn't go off into it in detail. I said, I guess I, I can share a little bit about it. Uh, sometimes it may be good for us to maybe cut out the cable bill. Maybe it may be good for us to uh, stop going out to eat as much and spend more time at home. It could foster an opportunity for us to build closer relationships with our, friend, our family and loved ones. Um, and, and we can uh, commu uh, learn to communicate and talk and learn and glean from one another if we sometimes turn the cable off. Turn the cable off and, and learn. Uh, sometimes we don't even know our children. We don't know what they're going through. And it's because we're so preoccupied with some of the things that we've purchased that we don't have time to... Uh, Spent, we haven't spent time with those that we should be investing in. There's no communication. You hadn't invested in time with your spouse. You've grown, uh, and you know how we say you've grown apart, or you you're not happy with the relationship. Well, it's you know it's not. Sometimes it's not that you're not happy with the relationship. It's that you don't have a relationship because you don't communicate. You don't talk. You don't learn how to work out problems and you don't learn how to appreciate the good in one another. So, and it's because sometimes it's from some of the things that you may have purchased or some of the things that have put you in, put you in bondage. You're in bondage because you don't have time to talk because you got to spend every moment trying to do some overtime and trying to come up with some income to pay for some bills. And now we blame it on one another. So it's real tricky with finances. 
And again, I'm glad that I'm able to share this with the congregation and with and those of you who are our listeners. And I know this doesn't look like a, a normal Bible study, but sometimes we have to look at these things and we have to get, um, I guess you would say, face-to-face -face teachings so that people can understand what the scriptures are really trying to teach you. Bible, the Bible, everything that I'm sharing with you now, you can find it in the Word of God. You can find it in the scriptures. It teaches you how to manage. It teaches you how to structure. It teaches you how to discipline yourself. The scriptures have always taught this. The scriptures actually teach us from a worldly standpoint to be wise, to be honorable, to have morals, to have character, to have structure. That's what the believer actually looks like when he walks in this world in, in uh, day to day life. He is uh, very organized, he's very structured, he's intelligent, and he's able to make wise decisions and he's not uh, uh, so quick to fall into the traps and the disciplines. The more you step away from God and the more you step away, actually the more you step away from discipline, God can't show you how to structure your house if you don't invite him into your house and you don't listen to him when he sits at the table as the scripture says and communes with you. But he will teach you and he will show you and that's why I'm trying to get very personal with you when I'm talking about your finances. Again, write down your income, write down your expenses. And then also uh, take a look at your savings and your 401k. I didn't get off into that, uh, but I could say a little bit about it. I still have a few minutes here, I guess, um, with, your, with your savings, if you have savings. Some of us have uh, these 401ks and we have the savings, uh, uh, IRAs and retirements and, you know, and all this kind of stuff here. Um, you, if you're, if I'll put it this way. If you're not a disciplined person and you can't stand to see money in a savings account without touching it, then 401ks uh, and things of that nature, those types of savings are, are maybe your best option. That's your best option. But for those that have discipline that can stand to look at their money and without touching it uh, for, for and spending it on frivolous things, then there is another alternative. We spoke earlier about paying off, uh, uh, paying off payments and bills with that that accrue interest. Uh, your four hundred one k, I know they say a lot of them. They say we match a dollar for dollar, but you start working at twenty years old and you sixty five or seventy when you retire. Uh, dollar for dollar really isn't a good deal compared to what your interest, how your interest rate builds on your home or how it builds on a vehicle. Uh, anybody should be able to take a dollar at 20 years old and multiply it into $2 by the time you get 60. You have 40 years to do that. So when you look at it, it's really not that good of an offer. Um, but uh, some people don't look at it that way. But I guarantee you that that same dollar that you uh, put on there if you would put it on the interest on your mortgage when you first purchase your home, I guarantee you it'll save you more money on interest on that home than that uh, 401k will make you by the time you get 65. And plus you'll pay that mortgage off on that home. You can pay that mortgage off much quicker and still have that mortgage payment coming into your savings. And I guarantee you can replace that 401k money if you don't have, you, you don't have to pay that mortgage every month. You ever thought about if I, I'm paying these $2,500 and uh, $3,000 mortgages every month for 30 years, 360 payments, if I would pay, uh, take that 401k money and, and take even just half of it and put it on uh, the principal balance of my mortgage and cut that 30 year, 360 payments down to maybe 100 payments. That means that you have 260, uh, that's 260 payments that you've saved uh, that you don't have to pay, and that's his interest that would have accrued on a 30-year mortgage. Now, some people never think about that. And then after you pay that off, now all of your monthly income, your mortgage that you will pay, it comes to you now. 
And some people will say, well, that's, that's easier said than done. It, it's very easily done. It's very easily done. You just have to have the discipline to do it. You just have to have the mindset to do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I, I dare not allow man to put it in my mind to tell me what I cannot do. I can do anything or you can do anything any other man does because I guarantee you there are others that are going out and doing this. But just because you haven't met them and you haven't seen them, don't, don't get the impression that it cannot be done because it can be done. And, it, and it's done on a regular basis. You just, you just haven't opened your mind to realize that it has been done. Well, but that is uh, enough for our teachings on today. I'll touch on a few other things and that really kind of sums it up. But I'll, I'll talk a little bit more next week on some more finances and how to handle our finances and how to handle money and just being uh, financially astute. And we'll get it all together and hopefully that this will bless your life. And uh, for those of us that like to hear a lot of Bible and all that, we'll get back to that. And I'll, I'll give you some more scriptures that you can kind of put with your notes here uh, next week. So you can put them with the notes. And when you get when you finish taking these notes, we're going to look at setting some goals. We're going to look at setting some goals and some uh, do some uh, five year, 10 year plans and kind of help you and kind of walk you through that and you put those scriptures with it and when you feel like you're getting off track you'll be able to uh, resource those scriptures get back to those scriptures and kind of get you on track so you can learn to accomplish uh, some of the tasks that are set before you god bless you and god keep you till we meet again pastor galen wright of the third avenue missionary baptist church dallas texas goodbye <music>